Hello, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, wherever you are. For me, the time is changing in this part of the world one hour early. So that is like seven o'clock for me over here, a.m. in the morning. And I hope it is seven in India at right now in the evening. So we have around 12, year, 12, 12 hours time difference. Look like a beautiful day for me and Sunday is always a little more relaxed uh, and you know when you have some time to spend with somebody who share the same kind of passion that's even more interesting. We have an interesting character today an amazing photographer who realized who was always a nature lover but then end up in discovering himself, discovering his love, discovering his passion in photography, in nature, with birds during the time of COVID. So some of us definitely do discover a lot more about ourselves during this COVID time. So we have one of such guests who is an amazing photographer, an amazing person in general, uh, as, as Sushmit, uh, who is going to join us here to share his journey as a photographer specifically focusing on nature and on birds so let's welcome him let's hear his story from him all right hello hi anisha how are you i'm doing good thank you how are you how was your day it's been good i've been just thinking about this uh, moment i've been looking forward to talking to you and share my journey uh, how it's been and uh, you've pretty much summed it up in a minute of how the covid and the lockdown period has helped me uh, reignite the passion which i never knew exist which i never knew existed but yeah the the tough times brought it forward and now i'm very happy that i'm where i want to be that is great that is great. Unfortunately, Hermes is not going to join us. He has some medical issues, so which is sad. He was so excited to be with you over here. Unfortunately, he cannot. Yeah. Sorry for that. But then I will try to manage things without his, you know, to cover up his absence. But let's see. So starting with your journey, you you mentioned that you started with uh, COVID, but if you can elaborate or if you can jump into your uh, presentation, that would be great. Yeah. So I, I'll of course start with my, uh, I'll talk about my journey in a, yes. in a minute or so. Yes. But yeah, initially I would just like to tell people that, you know, since we're talking about bird photography today, uh, yeah. the gear is like a family member to me. <laughs> so <laughs> my camera, my lens, my softwares, they are like, I spend more time with them. My wife actually gets angry that you're more time on the cam with the camera and the uh, lenses and the softwares than you spend with me. But she understands my love for it. So I currently use a Nikon D850. And since I'm a birder, the lens that I've been using is a 200 to 500 f5.6 planning uh -huh. to upgrade it soon yeah you've been very helpful in terms of uh, you know telling me also and making the right decision of what i should go forward with and i've uh, really? personally re yeah I realized that uh, you know uh, gimbal head it really helps as a tripod it really helps you know uh, yeah. us to use uh, have the maneuverability to be able to yeah. use things well in terms of the software that i use i'm going to come back to it because i want to talk to people whosoever is watching Sure. what is required and what is not required is that of course photoshop is a very important part of our uh, it, uh our photography lives then we, yeah. some softwares that come along with it then i use a software uh, called topaz denoise then for some creative stories and everything i use canva which is really interesting uh, software and mm -hmm. of course reels is in these days okay. so yeah premiere rush is pretty simple yeah i okay. want to it further in the times to come but yeah it solves my purpose currently so i'm very yeah. happy with it. yeah so now coming to my journey uh yeah. like you asked i'm sorry i came to the answer a little late no. but uh you know uh i it it started off in 2018 november uh i went to bharatpur with a couple of uh my friends my wife's friends husband and the kid and we all went and just thought that, okay, we'll go and see birds because they are nature lovers. And I was like, okay, yeah, I also like nature pretty much. And uh, I would like to see what we see there. So we went with a, they had a point and shoot camera. So 
we went there and what happens with point and shoot cameras is the more you zoom in the more uh, shake comes so yeah they were unable to click the photo so i asked my friend anku that okay give me the camera let me try and click i ended up clicking 15 20 good shots and uh, when i once i came back he said yeah you 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 click really nice photos i said oh yeah really then i started uh, putting it am up on you know uh, social media a couple of places and i got really good response then i thought okay might as well because since i'm enjoying it so much might as well invest in a camera and see if i can make this into a good hobby that's great so I, yeah so in uh, december of 2018 i invested in a nikon d850 and a 200 to 500 mm lens and that too has a very long story because i convinced my wife that okay let me save some money and then in 6 months i'll buy the camera the lens and then we'll start then it came down to 3 months then it came down to a month and then within 3 days i had bought the camera and my wife was like you bought it <laughs> it was these these cameras and lenses they are like okay they're not very very uh, you know uh, cheap the, the almost 3 to 3 and a half lakhs of investment that goes into it and she was like you should have given it thought and you know then invested and all so i said yeah it's okay now let's just start then i went to uh, in january i bought it in december january i went to uh, sultanpur national park the last time it was open thankfully now it's opened again so mm-hmm. i'm looking forward to go there sultanpur uh, national park is here in gurgaon okay so, a nice place to go i experimented with the camera a little bit uh, but yeah there there was a lot of research that went into the camera so anyone who's watching this i really want them to think will watch a lot of youtube videos uh come to sessions like these and understand what what you want to do because i think things change a lot uh, when you buy a uh, when you want to do wildlife photography and when you want to do bird photography the kind of photography that you want to do a lot of yeah. things matter so you need to research a lot when buying a camera so mm-hmm. i did that bit of research when i bought it i i again went in the field made a lot of mistakes so january i went to sultanpur after that unfortunately in february my ma- mother passed away uh, due oh, to sorry. an ailment but yeah that time again covid had started in march and that is when i started studying researching doing a lot of stuff went to my backyard because it was a lockdown and we couldn't go anywhere so there's a small pond behind my uh, you know society i walk mm-hmm. i used to walk there every morning and click the beaters the prinias the jacobin cuckoos a good good bit of birds that i could see here and started clicking them and uh, realized that okay if you know the settings if you understand how everything works you can really put up a good uh, picture and okay. enjoy what you're doing so i started enjoying it so that was my uh, backyard birding i would rather say Mm-hmm. and uh, then i went to of course bharatpur i been to satal which is heaven on earth for me i love that place pangot then old magazine house ganesh gudi dandeli it's a very famous place then there's a place near jaipur called chandlai lake then jap uh, then i went to goa also and uh, i've been to recently i've been to uh, bhigwan it's a very famous place near pune where okay. you get a lot of uh, raptors and indian grey wolf and a lot of other birds so that's my journey and uh, till now you know and i i, I hope it's uh, there's a long way to go so that's how i got into photography and i'm enjoying every day of it and every day i end up researching still now i'm researching on a lot of things on how to improve my photography skills and how to move forward so it's like a full time full time job for me i have to balance between my corporate life and my personal life which is this and i love it yeah that's great so yeah so okay now well, let's start with our presentation then yeah 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 so if if uh, like i said initially also you know we have to research on our gear like if i talk about nikon only because nikon's my favorite uh, no doubt about it and uh, if you talk about bird photography then uh, if someone wants to be completely into birding the d500 is a very good option for that matter so people need to research and understand what camera works best for you Uh, these are the do's that i'm talking about for all the photographers out there who are for starters specifically because it's not necessary to hi- buy the you know costliest gear understanding it and 
finding out the strengths of cameras also makes a lot of difference. So we have to know our gear, the strengths that our gears possess. And then we have to decide what we want and then invest in it. For people who already are camera owners, I think uh, very few basics I'd like to mention here is that, you know, it really helps me at least is that when I click a shot, I have to hold my breath. And for me, that makes a world of difference in case you don't have a tripod or a bean bag, which I'll come to later on. Uh, very important things. And once I hold my breath, I am able to get a good shot. So holding the camera correctly is very important. Now there's a big debate that keeps on happening all the time on, you know, what mode should I use? Because I also went through this phase and I'm going to try and associate with everyone here because I know the people who are, uh, people who have recently got into photography it takes a uh, uh, lot of questions come in, come in our mind. So for, for me, I have thought over those questions and tried to answer. So there's always a question that, okay, should I use the shutter priority, aperture priority or the manual mode? I feel that when you're talking about a fixed subject, a subject when you have very good lighting and a fixed subject is sitting and it's not moving a lot, which hardly happens in birding, then probably a aperture priority mode works. But the light has to be good. It's very important. And then if we talk about, uh, if I talk about one mode where you are able to creatively also control everything that happens and do whatever you want, you want to keep it low key, you want to keep it high key, you want to do experimentation, you want to make the, uh, you know, uh, if it's a reflection shot, you want to make it the soft reflection. So there's a lot of things that you can control. I think the manual mode is, uh, I would say, killer mode. Because exposure compensation, again, coming to it, is a very important thing when clicking photos. And especially, I'm sure everyone understands when you're talking about full white or full black subjects, exposure compensation really helps. But exposure compensation only works with the manual mode, mostly. So it really helps. So that's very important. Uh, Click in raw mode because it gives you the wings. It's basically like the Red Bull for your photography editing. Um, raw is really helpful. Understanding of light is very important. You have to know. Like they're very easily. Uh, I researched on it that I, I use a D850. I researched on uh, you. Uh, you know Google that. Okay, what is the strength? What is till what ISO can I take my camera before it starts to degrade the quality of the image? Every camera has that. So research about it and understand ISO, how it works for your camera. Understanding histogram is very important. It's going to take another session, long session. So I'm not going to go into details with that. And visualizing what you want to click is very important. Focus on the eye, extremely important. Uh, a lot of us just click and just keep on clicking. We don't, we don't have to click 20 shots of the bird or the subject in the same position. We have to move around, try to look for a smoother background, which gives the uh, photo another look completely. So tripod, of course, tripod, if you are sitting in a place where, you know, birds are close by and you're not disturbing them much, tripod really helps. Otherwise, also it helps. And a lot of places, photography happens through cars. So a beanbag again becomes a very good friend of yours. Golden art photography is another thing which comes with experience and I can talk about it. Uh, the three, four steps that you need to do and you you can experiment post that and everything changes for you. It really makes your photos stand out. And understanding editing and more importantly, how colors are linked to each other, how colors affect each other is very important. So that these are all my learnings and i feel that these things are very important now coming to the strict don'ts i would not take much time talking about that don't buy expensive gear because if you want if you can you should otherwise they are good cameras good lenses in uh, you know the right amount of money also you should go for what what what, what strength you afford, yeah. yeah so do not rush think before clicking that's the most important thing because i guilty as charged when I went to places like Satal Bharat for the first time, I was always concerned, oh, bird bhag jayegi. it'll fly away, it'll fly away. But even if you don't, if you don't think and click, it'll anyways, if and if it stays there, you'll not get a good shot. So you need to think and then click. Creatively, you have to think. Don't disturb the subject, which is, of course, a rule that all of us should follow because they are, they are creatures which are making our lives very nice, but we don't need to disturb them. Don't over edit your photos. Don't just try to click portraits that, okay, I have to get the further details. Sometimes the best of shots are the most distorted ones. 
like if you click a bird flying in a slow shutter speed the eye and the head is in focus let's rest of the bird has got wings uh, flapping you know it gives a very creative effect that it gives a feeling of motion so always it's not important to get everything in tack sharp and focus sometimes you can use it creatively as well don't use lower shutter speeds at if you're clicking handheld because the cameras these days of course mirrorlesses are coming they're lighter and everything but still uh, you know shake always uh, happens even if you click with the you know uh, uh, light uh, shutter speed so don't go very low i would suggest like depending on the camera at least 200 1 by 200 shutter speed is a must and if you're using a tripod then even click at 30 1 by 30 it's absolutely fine so uh, don't uh, again then then don't use an ethical methods of editing because i've i've come across a few people who uh, you know i don't want to name anyone or anything but yeah editing changing the background i just feel that takes away the essence of the you know the picture so a lot of people yeah. do that and which should not be done because it makes your job easy and photography is not about making your job easy it's about enjoying the moment and trying to get better every time so yeah. that that's about it uh now yeah most important topic here uh, you can interrupt me anytime if you want uh, you know anything no I no i mean uh, as and when we have questions i'll definitely um, bug you but as of now it's all hello from everyone uh, a lot of people hello, over yeah. here yeah. all right yeah. yeah there's a very famous guy named jared polin uh, i am a big fan of his uh, he's a fantastic guy he mm -hmm. he has unbiased opinions over a lot of things so one thing is uh, he he promotes his i shoot raw so yeah <laughs> the raw thing is very important if you get a dslr if you get a mirrorless camera if you're not clicking in raw you're wasting your talent you're wasting the camera's talent so yeah. the most important thing for each and every birder or a wildlife photographer out there is to click in raw because trust me once you understand how editing works because our eyes can see better than any camera they may yeah. make a super computer of a camera but what our eyes what god has given us in form of these eyes no one can match that not even the best of cameras in the world so yeah. and our aim is to put what we see on the picture so depending on a lot of situations uh, you know reflective lights through coming through leaves or through water or some distracting elements behind us also affect the color of the subject yeah. so or us to click in raw helps us visualize and connect what we saw is to what we are putting on the you know photo so that opens up you know we very well know that all the colors are a mixture of whites and blacks yeah and different intensities of these colors make different shades of gray so for that we need to understand how colors work very important and uh, yeah like if i talk about rgb cmy r is related the red is related to the cyan the g is related to the uh, magenta so all these combination and understanding there are a lot of researches uh, that available a uh, lot of content available online people need to study that so that they realize that okay if i shift the color from here or there what impact does it have on the photo so there are softwares coming these days which are brilliant which help you you know check only the color that you want to particularly bring closest to reality is to what you saw so raw is of course a very very important thing now understanding the exposure triangle this is the toughest part which i initially faced um, exposure triangle and uh, exposure you know yeah. uh, so shutter speed iso and aperture i've put it very simply uh, i don't want to say that okay if you increase this that decreases i have simply put what i did while i was making this particular slide i simply used my camera and did those things and wrote them down it's very easy if you increase the iso the exposure increases the exposure increase means brightness increases noise will also increase and if you have to you know uh, a perfectly exposed image is something that everything comes in detail every highlights and uh, shadows Uh, are in sync and you know we don't lose any particular detail on the photo so in case you increase the iso you have to increase the shut uh, 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 you know uh, increase the shutter speed so that the photo gets darker and compensate so when you increase the shutter speed automatically the subject gets frozen and you are able to click a better shot this is how iso works 
aperture if we go from f 2.8 f4 f5.6 these lower numbers means more light is coming in again that can confuse a lot of people shallow depth of field means less f4 f value and higher f value means more part of the uh, uh, photo is in focus so if you increase the shutter speed and decrease the iso also it compensates for the aperture then coming to shutter speed if you increase the shutter speed the photo will get darker action gets frozen but in case you want to if you keep on increasing the shutter speed and the subject gets dark and then you're not able to get a good photo for that you have to compensate you have to increase the iso and reduce the exposure to compensate exposure compensation is a very helpful thing because exposure compensation the scale that you see here the uh, the one that we saw at see at the bottom here it's basically helps us not change our shutter speed and everything and other settings but still able, we are able to get the perfect kind of exposure on the photo so this really helps in getting uh, the right kind of photo that we need now this is again a very famous line that i follow i had put it the eye of the tiger it's a famous song by uh, you know rocky the movie the eye of the tiger or the bird choose your focus point carefully so i have realized this thing you know uh, initially since i am slightly on the heavier side i used to be lazy and i never never used to get down to the eye level <laughs> i touched again <laughs> yeah so but i realized you know uh, this this hoopu that you see on the left hand side i was sitting in the car i was lucky it was sitting on a perch just at the same height that i was and then okay. i clicked this photo this is from sultanpur gurgaon mm -hmm. and this is my, one of my first photos that i clicked really nicely because okay the god presented me with this opportunity that the bird came and sat sat beside me and it was the at the eye level but then when i started clicking these kind of photos i realized that you know whenever we get down to the eye level it feels like it the the bird kind of interacts with you and the best moment is when either they are parallel to the camera or you sitting or they look at you because then it's you can weave a story around it you end up thinking that okay what must this bird be doing what is it that we are talking about and everything anything if you can put lives into you know static pictures yeah everyone's going to love it so i'm sure you very well know it you're 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 a champion at doing these kind of things but yeah all these photos i i i have realized that once you feel the bird is at your level it always is a very good interactive uh, kind of a photograph yeah. now i i i predominantly want to be an extremely uh, famous action photographer i want to i i i enjoy portraits but i love action and trust me most of the action shots that i've gotten in my lifetime which is very yeah. short like time in bird photography is when i've kept my i've been inquisitive okay I, i'm sitting with two people i'll tell you about this photo which where i we see a harrier probably has got a, a you know a drongo sitting on top of it we know that yeah. these the crows and the uh, drongos they mob a lot of uh, you know birds other But birds they, yes yeah i there were two people along with me i was in tal chapar um, mm -hmm. very close friends of mine they were busy clicking uh, these uh, black bucks fighting the ones that you see on the left yeah. but there i was i was very inquisitive okay i've clicked two shots done okay let me look around what am i getting and suddenly i saw from uh, you know diagonally on the left hand side that there was this uh, you know uh, the harrier flying and these uh, i've got six seven shots of this but this one turned out to be the best and i just i, I didn't check the settings to be honest Yeah. and i just clicked and yes. this is the result that i got it might not be the best of images but this moment is one of the best because it's very uh, it's very uh, special to get these kind of shots for that you have to be keeping your mind open you they, they you, you know they say that okay you have to have kind of six eyes yeah focus <laughs> on your once you are done try to look around you might get anything any moment and when you are in midst of these amazing creatures anything can happen anytime so just be active tell your story yeah. it's a special moment it it's what differentiates you so this is this is my aim to get 10000 more of these shots on <laughs> hopefully i'll get them someday yeah mm -hmm. and of course uh, talking about these photographs of course these have been i would say uh, 50% has been luck why i say luck is because 
the more time we give to photography, the more rewarding it is. It's a true statement. Thanks to for everyone. But yeah, uh, the, the leftmost photo here is from uh, uh, Corbett. And I didn't even go to Corbett. I've not been to Corbett for bird photography. I went in July, but it was raining for three days. Unfortunately, I didn't get anything except a crimson sunbird which was like, okay, I got one lifer. It's good for me. So this this property, Lebua, just below that, mm -hmm. there's a point where we get these collared falconets. Okay. And people are so much aware that the people I went with, they said, Do baje, two o'clock, it'll come and sit here. Just wait. <laughs> Set up my tripod on the perch. I took it to the topmost level because the point was slightly higher. Okay. So our aim was to give the photo an effect that it's on eye level shot. So if you look okay. at this photo, it might look like an eye level shot. It's not. It okay. was almost 10 feet above me. So I had to pick the right kind of angle. Okay. I had to work into minus 0.2 of exposure compensation because the bird being, you know, uh, the front part of the bird being white. Yeah. So there was a lot of challenge. But yes, the bird gave us so much time that we mm. ended up getting decent shots. That's now. Beautiful. Yeah, so the middle one here we see is uh, from Bharatpur. Everyone knows these points. It's the one when you enter in the first, we call this the Haina point. Oh, okay. uh, so we went there and I, I was with a couple of friends and I saw this, okay, there's a kid there and okay, the mom is walking in other mm -hmm. corners. And suddenly I said, okay, let's wait. Let's just stay quiet, not move. We walk and I saw this, okay, it's a mirror image in the background. We yeah. can weave a story around it. And I just clicked it at the right moment and got this shot. So for me, this shot is again very special. Yes. And uh, then coming to the third one, it's the, the, my most favorite bird in the world. Uh, it's the uh, black-throated bush tit. They're cute little buggers. I love them. And they always travel in teams. Mm -hmm. they, they exhibit teamwork a lot. So <laughs> luckily, I got this a very special moment when all of them now, this I couldn't have planned. But yeah, I would, yeah. I, I, this moment, I would agree. I took 20 seconds and I just kept the bet button, focus, pressed. And I just didn't wait. I said, I said, okay, they will give some special moment. You can't do much here because there are five subjects. You can't do a lot. Just have yeah. your closure correct, your shutter speed correct so that you can freeze the action. The aperture needs to be shallow. And since we, I was lucky also that they were all in the same frame. That's uh, the correct. same thing. Same Luckily, got the shot, and uh, I would rate this as one of my best shots till date. I just love it because Thanks. it's it's That's again nice. got a story around it. Yeah, yeah. So just I'm. This is for all the people watching. You know, wait for the right moment. Think in your mind. Study the behavior of the bird or the animal, and then okay. click. Don't rush. It always helps. I've learned it the hard way. I want everyone to understand. It's very important. End of the day, it's just gonna fill up your computers. You're going to be ending up because we all are very lazy at deleting photos and we yes. sometimes don't delete also. So try to click as much as is required. Don't overdo it is what I have realized. I want everyone else also should do this, this is my personal observation. Oh, yeah. okay. Now, uh, again, there's a big subject that, okay, when do you decide that you want to click a uh, landscape or a portrait photo? So yeah. Yeah, when there's a single subject, uh, you can focus uh, and the background seems very friendly, then you can click a, you know, portrait shot and mm -hmm. uh, the shallow depth of field, everything. So the right side, the two photos uh, are an example of that. But in the left, uh, there's this point uh, in Sapan Mori in Bharatpur, where we just go in the left and there's an open land for, you know, almost kilometers. And in the evenings, when the sun is setting down, you really get beautiful golden light. So if if I look at this photo at the bottom on the left hand side, the egret, I don't know. I never knew that it's going to be a special photo. But yeah, I just love this frame so much. And I've, I've shared it with a few people. They just say they love it because it's got that. I, I When I look at this photo, I just simply, that one song from Guns N' Roses is uh, knocking on him. Knocking on heaven's door is what comes to my mind. And it feels like that bird is entering heaven. So yeah, this is a special moment. Of course, this uh, owlet again gave a very beautiful shot. Now, I want everyone to look at this photo and see that it's not a very clear frame. But it's got that 
mystery about it. There's a little bit of grass coming from the left hand side, covering the bird a bit. There's a little bit of leaves because since it was a shallow depth of field, it gave a very hearty kind of a picture. And this is what I want people to understand when you've got a bird sitting in a certain small area and it's got habitat around it, try to take the habitat because it beautifies the photo completely. So this is uh, about the landscape or the portrait. When you see that the background is helpful, it's clearer, it's beautiful, or it's got some elements, with different planes to the photo, try and use that. Otherwise, if it's the bird is sitting out in the open, just go for a portrait shot. It's going to work wonders. Now, uh, especially about this photo, I would say, uh, this is from Bhagwan Maharashtra. I went with my friend Anupam there, and uh, uh, I just realized that we were looking for the Indian gray wolf, and I just couldn't, we just couldn't find it. And uh, suddenly a moment came when we said, okay, let's, it's too far, just go for it and click it. I said, okay, stop the car right here, because I see these uh, trees in front, and it's got, they've got yellow flowers on it. And we've got a tree uh, coming on the uh, from the right hand side, uh, 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 another uh, tree at the background, and the it was a hilly kind of a terrain. So when there are multiple planes in the photo, it really beautifies your image because the greens and the yellows are what add li life to your photos. So right contrast, right color combination, I'm sure the photo can do wonders. This one, I'll be very honest. If I zoom in on the uh, on the wolf, it'll not be too much in focus. It was too far. And okay. I just didn't have time to, to change my settings. Yeah, you said something? No, no, I said uh, the flowers definitely do add value in this yeah, particular yeah. way. Yeah, and honestly, I've started realizing this in the last three, four months. So it's a constant uh, evolving evolving uh, moment for me also. I'm talking about here my journey. I'm going to give tips, but I'm sure there are 10,000 people sitting out there who might have better tips than me, but this is my journey, so I'm going to talk about it. These flowers add so much of vibrance to your photos. So much. It's it's not even funny. And you know, uh, with raw photos, when you edit them, it takes your photograph to another level. That's true. We have a question uh, from, uh, so that's from Ellie. How do you judge the right increment of exposure compensation to be used? See, uh, in terms of exposure compensation, I would say, first of all, we need to understand what kind of subject it is. If uh, it changes a lot, if it's uh, if it's a bird we don't want to miss, if it's a white, uh, if it's a bird sitting in a certain perch, but it's got a white background, then you need to increase the exposure compensation because if you don't increase it to a certain level and you have to experiment because after clicking 10 photos, you'll also understand that how exposure compensation works. I'll give you an example. I went to Satala, I clicked a uh, brown wood owl and that was the bird was sitting in the tree but it had got pockets of light coming from behind now that was very distracting but i didn't have a choice so i took my comp uh, exposure compensation in the plus side to up to three it added noise to the photo but i got a uh, with a noise reduction and everything i could have gotten a better photo but if you increase the exposure compensation the frame brightens up so it's an experimentation if you're clicking a white subject a negative exposure compensation helps. You have to experiment. I, yeah. I'll not say that, okay, it's a fixed value that, okay, if the light is this intense, you need to go this. But generally, from uh, if it's a white subject, minus one to uh, point, minus point seven to minus two is what works. Okay. And if it's a very dark subject, uh, any, uh, a bird is in very lot of shade and the background is a little distracting, then you can increase the exposure compensation to even plus two, plus three. Since it's a sat sitting subject, try and take three, four extra shots with different exposure compensation because every moment, every light moment is different. So yeah. you experiment, see if it's a flying bird or something which is very fast moving, you'll get one chance, you click it, it's a gamble. Yeah. But with time, with experience, you'll understand that. But if the bird is sitting, it's giving you time, yeah. then click in minus, uh, plus 0.7, plus one, plus 1.7 and try all these components once you open them in your laptop on the computer you'll get a good shot because you've tried everything so it's it's again I, I would say it's a gamble but yeah with 10 photos when if i come across that situation again when i know the sky background is very bright and the bird is sitting in the perch and there's a lot of shade around it i'll know okay last time when i click this photo this setting works so i'll use that setting again so i hope i've answered the question yeah 
yeah i mean yeah it it a lot when it comes to exposure or any kind of things you know the more experience you have and we all look in a different way yeah. i may not be seeing things in the way you see it or yeah. an x y or z will have different opinion uh, but i think anything to do with the light and uh, depth of field is again work together so it all differ from person to person but experience play a major role Yeah. We have one more question. From... I'm sure Nisha can answer that question better because she's far more experienced than all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, yeah. We are here. We are sharing your journey, so definitely it's yeah. your perspective. Yeah. Uh, then Anupam, I uh, have a question. What, what's your, what are your thoughts on monochrome? Monochrome. Yeah, Anupam. I, I, I hope this is Anupam Thombre, my friend. Yes. I I love uh, monochromes and I see that there's a lot of uh, good uh, storytelling and beautiful you know things that can be done uh, when it comes to monochrome but I personally feel that uh, monochrome comes into the picture when your subject is maybe of a of a single color maybe it's like complete white complete black or complete brown in habitat or anything for that matter and uh, clicking it the, the uh, them through uh, clicking monochromes through that really adds a lot of value to the picture because we all click ber- same birds a lot of times i go yeah. to bharatpur every year i'll click egrets every time but if i keep on taking the same flying shots the same golden eye shots it'll get boring after a point of time so in order to experiment monochromes are something that big artists can do because they see it very differently i unfortunately i don't think i've reached that moment yet where i can say that i'm an expert at monochrome i'm not even a novice at monochrome but yes i want to try it and i will try it but i personally feel that with subjects who are specifically in one color for them monochrome works a lot i you and i wouldn't be posting a pitta photo a gold uh, you know uh, yeah. uh, in pitta photo in monochrome because the beauty of that bird lies in the colors uh, if we talk about probably a indian paradise fly catcher probably yes because the head is dark blue and the body is white and then it can probably work but depends on the background as well so yeah tough question uh, but i hope i've been able to answer that yeah, yeah. Well, i mean it's it's again a personal choice how do you how do you see things and how do you try with it i mean Um, there are people who work who love ul, ul, who do their work only in monochrome yeah yeah so i've seen a couple who are not keen at all yeah yeah crazy yeah. level yeah. yeah so yeah if there any aren't any more questions i'll move no, on we'll we'll continue with the yeah, yeah. show sure. so of course we've done with the con- composition thing here of course the placing the subject in the right place is very important now this is another moment <laughs> uh, and which i loved uh, this was a moment when we were going towards uh, another place baramati near uh, bhagwan uh, and uh, i i was with my friend anupam of course and another very good friend of ours amol and uh, i said okay stop stop there are a owl pair sitting there so we sat there and we saw that they used to they just came to that bark of a tree and went back they were doing this repeatedly and then some crows came into the picture yeah so every time the crow came and flew above them they would either look up or make noise or make calls that okay you're disturbing us don't so we tried to capture as many shots as possible because there are shots i've not put it here but there's a point where both the owls with their left eye visible are looking up at the owl, uh, at the crows so these kind of moments you know we can make crows uh, a crowsel post out of it or you know do a lot of experimentation not just one uh, pick and and again i would say interact and inter- interaction between subjects always adds a lot to the photo yeah. it takes the photo to another level and uh, it makes the person think that okay what must be happening here if i hadn't told that story here i'm sure people who are watching this slide must have thought in their mind that why is it looking there and why is it looking at you and screaming why what are they doing so if we've made people think about you know what the bird is doing in the photo we have the battle is won it's very important to have you know one single subject second subject comes the photo becomes bigger and when three four five subjects come in the picture it goes to another level so these kind of things a person clicking the photos had to keep in mind yeah i agree so yeah so this these are one of my favorite lines because uh, you always have to keep of 
keep on innovating to, in order to inspire people. Yeah. So, like if I talk about the uh, well, uh, velvet fronted nut hatch, yeah. this is a signature uh, way of that bird. Yeah. It, it perches down. It, it it's one moment. You know, I've got per, a, a photo of this bird sitting upright, sitting properly in a side angle. But this was a special moment when it was. We've all seen Stranger Things. When I posted it photo, I said that welcome to the world of upside down. <laughs> it actually, you know, makes you think. Okay, yeah. okay, there's some some story to it. Then talking about this uh, Leo Trix, the lipstick bird, reflection in water adds a lot of fun spunk to the photo. These uh, these again these egrets, they were fighting over a fish, and the other one was trying to take it away, and this one ran behind it. So. we have i constantly keep on thinking now if i if if i ask anyone sitting there that the one the, the photo that we see here is of the uh, gray lag geese if i click one of them separately each one of them separately they are not looking they are not even parallel to the camera they are diagonally looking somewhere else it won't have made a good frame but since there were three of them and they are not even looking at the camera but it makes a very interesting because they are looking in the same direction one is sitting in a different position one is looking in the different position and one is got its wings open so these kind of things will come with will come with experience and this this is what makes this photo special is that there were everything that was wrong with this photo there was nothing right it was not that the bird was looking at us it was not interacting with us it was just looking in a different direction but there were since there were three subjects added in the picture it it made the photo what it is it made made the photo special now coming for the now this this one uh, uh again is a very special photo for me the one with the checkered keel back is the fish uh, anyone who studies uh, you know uh, herpetology would know that whenever a snake eats a fish they take the head part in first so that the fish cannot escape okay. so i was in uh, chandlai near jaipur and i went with a very dear friend uh, uh, mr i'm forgetting the name yeah but he's a he's a very senior photographer and a very good field guy i went with him and uh, we were clicking photos of the uh, you know egrets and other uh, birds trying to catch fish early in the morning and suddenly we see that okay there's a snake in the water it comes up and these are big leaves uh, uh, in the water lotus kind of leaves which are huge the snake came up and it was catching this fish and uh, i said okay let's click a few photos and eventually when uh, this fish escaped it didn't die it was not eaten by the snake because the snake had not taken it properly in the mouth and the eye was outside so this is what storytelling is all about again oh Now that's that a new information yeah Thank yeah you. yeah this is what i have been told and i studied about it and guys yeah most of the people also i posted this on instagram it got featured on nat geo also Uh, maybe lucky moment for me but yeah people said that okay the fish was uh, the uh, the snake was trying to save the fish maine kaha yeah it is another perspective that the snake was trying to save the fish and put it back in the water so a lot of things yeah anything can be built around your stories uh yeah again these gray lag geese moment when they were twining and flying together then this very famous oriental dwarf kingfisher this is from panvel a uh, very special moment I, i i especially only flew from delhi to mumbai to capture this particular photo because i i love the i love kingfishers and this is a very beautiful kingfisher but i still love the common kingfisher more i don't know why but i do love it yeah so we have we to have study it yeah uh that's from camera moments um uh, uh, hello sushmit is there any unique style of composition in composing images uh, which you have acquired and developed as a habit as a habitat in your uh, journey so far i didn't get the question can you just repeat it once again sushmit is there any unique style of composing uh, composing images which you have acquired or developed as a habit i think he put it as habitat uh, but mm -hmm. i think he is talking about habit yeah, yeah. um in your journey so far i wouldn't say that because you know unlike uh, a lot of other things where we have a lot of control with the uh, birds specifically i don't think we have the freedom to you know 
compose the same kind of photo yeah i can go to the same point in bharatpur and wait for the sunset to happen and try to click the same image i tried it last weekend the same picture did not come i cannot we none of us can uh, yes we can try certain uh, things but they, those are cliched steps those are everyone is doing what you have to do as a photographer is uh, to differentiate and you know make something that is unique to you so yeah uh, always we can try we can try for habitat shot we can try capturing a bird with a lot of shade around it try to frame it in such a way show the habitat but we have no, i think, think the question is about composition not about habitat uh, do you have any composition technique which you unique composition techniques which you have developed see no i would say a unique uh, i don't have any unique steps for that yeah i use the rule of thirds that we have we have uh, the spiral ways of uh, you know there's a spiral formation if you go into uh, photoshop and lightroom there are various methods where you can you know when you crop the photo you can keep the subject in a certain corner because it's been uh, photographically scientifically proven that there are certain points of the photo where the focus goes first so those kind of steps uh, there's no unique one but yeah ma mainly people follow the rule of thirds and you have to give the bird or the subject the space positive space on the side that it's looking and then yeah. you get a good good frame yeah that's about it yeah so yeah that's yeah okay i hope i've been able to answer this is a tricky one <laughs> yeah so these are these are the photos that you know which i have given it time and you know uh, clicked and which i feel that kind of i kind of did justice to now of course i'm going to talk about two more important things one one is how to click the perfect portraits it's my observation yeah. uh, because first of all we've got to ensure that the subject is at the right distance we can't expect the subject to be 500 meters away from us and then try to click a portrait <coughs> will not because the portrait's most important component is the composition and the details i feel that keep your aperture wide open a lot of people say that okay keep it 6.3 7.18 i understand that but if you've got to my observation again if you've got to click the best you have to zoom in completely because if you keep the lens like i use a 200 500 if i'm trying to click a portrait i would not click it at 200 because 200 gives does not give the uh, does not make the background soft does it makes it may bring the bird in good focus but it will not do justice in terms of softening the backgrounds so all these photos now the one that we talk about here zitting cysticola that we see here it was very close to me and i clicked it at 500 mm and uh, 5.6 and look at the background it's completely soft some people might even say it's photoshopped but it's not so sometimes we get lucky with these kind of moments and for that it's very important you have to and all these i would say uh, the the zitting cysticola it was uh, the uh, the saras crane uh, these were clicked handheld so i had to ensure that my shutter speed was high because even when the bird breathes a shake can come even when you breathe the shake can come so it's very important for you to click with at a higher shutter speed and if you are sitting in a car use the bean bag if you are at a place where you can keep this tripod properly i know a lot of people say that it restricts me but you got to get used to holding if you want top quality images you got to use a tripod or a bean bag it's very important and it will really take your uh, photos to the next level now if you uh, last question that we had from camera moments was that okay compose composition everyone follows it in world in the world rule of thirds is very nice but there are other methods also you should study about it i have studied about them i have incorporated two three of them and uh, they've helped me take the photo to the next level like the wolf one i sh uh, showed i didn't use the rule of thirds in that it was looking up dead front so i had to keep the subject in the center it makes the uh, the photo speak nicely and most important in bird photography is if you don't have catch light in portraits dump it delete it just leave it because the bird will not look alive you have to have catch light if you look at all these photos there is catch light in the birds uh, eye that's very important because that is what brings the photo to life now 
again uh, i kind of consider myself as a intermediate uh, good action photographer like i said so a very important thing uh, in action shots is that you don't have to get scared in increasing the iso click at 2000 iso click at 2500 3200 doesn't matter know your cam camera strength and use the maximum if the light is low you can't click without you know increasing the iso and if you don't increase the iso in manual you'll not be able to experiment with the shutter speed as well if you have to capture action you have to make iso and shutter speed your friends do not yeah. click in aperture priority mode is my observation because if, if the light is too good then maybe it will work for you but you want a step a method that works for you all the time so the the sooner you get on manual yes you will have a lot of failures i had a lot of failures but you have to try and understand how manual mode works it's very important learn the art of panning the heavier the lens it doesn't matter but if you pan then you get good shots the one that i talked uh, uh, the uh, the one the two birds flying in the bottom the cotton pygmy goose uh, here i've all clicked them handheld with a uh, you know panning method i've got 20 shots all of them in focus so if you learn the art of panning you'll always do well yeah if you have the opportunity to experiment if you know there's a show shot action going to happen use your gimbal head use the tripod and you will succeed yeah perspective matters a lot of people say that okay a lot of people make checklists i also used to make a checklist that okay okay i have clicked this bird if someone says now that okay uh, you want to click this no i have clicked it last time doesn't work like that <laughs> doesn't work like that because how when words birds will surprise you these three photos here are, are of the same bird but they are completely different elements completely different ways of clicking you know even now i can you and i can talk you if i ask you nisha you can also say that okay there are 20 more shots possible with the common kingfisher there are you can get a fishing shot you can get a flying shot you can get a shot where it's uh, you know uh, uh, just dipped itself into water and it's trying to you know rotate uh, and trying to dry itself there'll be uh, splashes of water around it so there are many ways that you can click a photo so for advice for each and every bird photographer is never think that you you're finished with the bird it will surprise you in the best ways possible so perspective matters think of how differently you can click it in fact if i talk about the first and the third photo here is the same common kingfisher clicked 10 minutes apart so that is the difference look at the depth of field on the first one and the third one the third one yeah. is a little bit a little bit of the background and it shows that okay it's kind of it kind of looks sad there that okay i didn't get a fish i'm sad but <laughs> the one uh, on the left most one the first one shows that okay i'm on the lookout for a fish so these kind of things you know if once you start associating these kind of things you think what the bird is thinking and probably you'll get a good shot again coming to this word i to fly catcher if everyone must be observing why is it got different colors in all these photos is because of the lighting conditions yeah and the way you edit also probably to an extent no one can say that okay this is the right color and sushmeet you probably overdid it you shouldn't have done this you probably played with the colors of the bird in fact in these kind of birds i can't play with the colors of the bird all i can do is open the shadows yeah and different perspectives the one on the extreme left looks sea green the one in the center looks cyan and the one in the right looks uh, uh, blue uh, mm. completely different color yeah so all are simple looking in the same direction and they don't look like the same bird so ignite the creative center of your mind you'll get awesome shots then of course golden hour my favorite time of the day <laughs> um and of course another advice for all the bird photographers out there is do not click when the sun is up high it it's too challenging it does not give you good uh, photos the shadows are really bad you will click the beak is here it will be coming on the body it doesn't look good so try clicking in the second half of the day after uh, you know 3 3:30 depending on the kind of lighting like i'm sure in nisha where you are uh, the sun may be rising and setting at different times but i'm yeah. talking about perspective uh, per, 
particularly about India and North Delhi, North of India specifically. Early morning, six o'clock, the sun is starting to rise, and by seven thirty-eight, eight thirty, after that, doesn't help. So think and then play with the white balance. Like I can simply say one special hack for all the people click trying to click golden hour shots is that play with the uh, uh, you know uh, play with the white balance of your camera. Take it to uh, sh shadow or shade and then play with the exposure compensation in the negative side you will get different uh, you know uh, colors you will you will get the feeling that it's a golden hour special golden hour so these kind of things you have to think and experiment with your camera and really makes a lot of impact all these uh, are different thoughts that came to my mind when i click these photos again silhouettes the best time to click silhouettes is uh, you know late evening or early morning and this is the golden color is always attractive rim photos you can click like the one that on extreme right i'd rather yeah. uh, i i would say that this was an opportunity that was presented to us we were just going down via the car and said stop look at those monkeys look at those langurs look at how beautiful they are looking we got down kept the iso at 100 and clicked these photos like crazy and the more you travel, the more nature will present opportunities like this. So golden hour is one of the special times for every one of us. I'm sure you've clicked crazy shots. I've seen your photos. You're, you're another level. <laughs> so yeah, brilliant, uh, brilliant opportunities the golden hour presents to us. Now editing, the most important thing where we get a lot of questions is like, like I said initially that the camera cannot compete with your eyes. Remember it and then through these softwares, try to match your uh, the vision that your eyes saw. Very easy for everyone. You don't need to invest in big, big softwares. You just get a basic Photoshop package, which is for 800 bucks. It gives you Camera Raw. It gives you Photoshop. It gives you Lightroom. I use Camera Raw, but Lightroom is fantastic. It allows cataloging and everything. It's really helpful. Everyone's personal choice. Again, understand the relationship between highlights and shadows. This will require a little bit of study. And it's not tough. I've been taught this by my friend and I was able to you know, incorporate it well. It increased my understanding towards how I need to click. And there's no fixed rule. Like I, I, everyone does not have to you know, take the shadows, uh, highlights to full and the shadows completely open. Sometimes it's okay to keep it in between. It gives a very beautiful effect to the photo. Then understanding the relationship between colors, primary colors, the RGB, the CMYK, all these things need to be understood. And it's it's not going to take a lot. It takes an, a day for you to, if you give it proper time, like the ones like we give in our offices, if you give this time, we understand this, it improves our photography editing skills to another level. It takes it to another level. Now talking about noise reduction, everyone, no one likes noisy photos. Sometimes it works because it's you're trying to creatively project something. But there are ways of removing noise even without a software like Denoise. It's very easy. We can do it. We just need to look for it. Like YouTube has been our best friend. I have learned majority of my photography. Uh, I, I just it, uh, you know entered in the search bar how to remove noise without using Denoise. And I got a method. Though I was able to invest in Denoise, it makes my job easier. But it's okay. You can learn steps and it doesn't take the only difference is instead of two minutes, it'll take five minutes. Uh -huh. But yes, you need to try each and everything and it can make a lot of impact. Editing again, a lot of people say that, okay, make a sorry steps. Tell me all the steps. <laughs> How first what do the what next to do what third to do what trust me, the best of my photos that I've been able to put out there sometimes are not been even been edited. I've not even removed noise or not even tried to sharpen it. I don't sharpen any of my photos, to be honest. I just, I'm very selective about what I share with people, what I post on social media. I just don't sharpen my images. I don't. I just use the basic things and a few steps here and there to, because I personally feel that bring, bring is closest to natural. The bird should look natural, like when you saw it. So the better it is, you have to achieve photography skills to that effect that, okay, 
editing should not make it better your clicking should be doing 90% of the job 10% should be the editing skills and it depends if you want to print it and other things then it's another game game altogether exporting the picture correctly for various social media platforms is very important we need to understand that don't oversaturate don't over sharpen and i've said it before don't engage in unethical editing habits because then you will not enjoy it just to get a few who has hi your photo is awesome people know everything people understand everything if i show you a photo right now if if i have posted another a, a photo any one of these photos where i have done a bit extra which i shouldn't have done nisha would have known by now trust me people are experienced out there everyone gets to know what you're doing in order to be irreplaceable one must always be different so i'm trying to tell you that don't try to follow some people take guidance from them but eventually try to create your own style i'm sure everyone wants to be different and unique so there these are few of my shots i i can tell you that this uh, the bird flying had a twig in its mouth the egret was pushed away by the heron uh, i went with my very close friends to bharatpur and my battery of my d850 went out and they were clicking silhouettes of the bird with the sun behind it i missed it but i changed the battery i went ahead and got this shot of the deer who was being chased by feral dogs unfortunately but yeah. this moment was special when the water was plinking all over they didn't get that shot i got it so don't be sad you know nature will present opportunities to you and you will make a difference just give it time be patient yeah. so the one that we see here is the blue cheeked bee eater in the center it's got a a bug in its mouth it's a flying shot and i click 300 shots to get this one <laughs> because i had decided i will not go home till the time i don't click it it might not again be the best shot but i love this shot because i achieved something because i gave it time so every one of us needs to find a space and if you decide to do something you can achieve it and some moments you get lucky like the gray lag geese i was just lying down on the you know ground and trying to click them and suddenly they both flew and i i i just went panning at an angle of 80 90 degrees and at a moment came when i was back on my back and clicking towards the sky but yes i got these shots and they were special the one that we see here is, uh, on the left most bottom is the tawny eagle uh yeah. before that there was a, a tawny eagle male sitting there giving a very beautiful portrait shot this tawny female which is bigger in size came up from top and we got shots of it coming down slowly and steadily and then as soon as it landed the male flew so these moments only come to us if we give it time yes. and we visualize that okay now what's going to happen be ready be ready to click and just sometimes you get lucky sometimes you don't but more often if you give it more time you'll get lucky and you'll get such shots so yeah. these are special special shots that i got again uh, these shots again uh, i would say the, the first one is from tal chapar and okay. i had uh, the subject is not looking at me but i kept clicking because i saw uh, i saw a few drongos just hovering around the uh, you know the neel guy and uh, i got this moment and when i showed it to a few people i said okay is it good they said oh it's a fantastic shot i said why can't i see it they said that okay sometimes you won't see it but sometimes you got to listen to people's feedback and just go ahead and you know experiment so i posted it on instagram and it 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 got a lot of appreciation it's a beautiful frame is what people say so okay yeah. fine then the flower in the uh, the uh, more important thing about any of these photographs is that you have to have more subjects more interactive elements in the photo like the one on the right hand side it's a yellow eyed blabbler just below a leaf of a of a tree yeah everyone gets yellow babbler shot uh, yellow eyed babbler shots but this one was special and it suddenly came and i was like okay oh god it's a beautiful shot i clicked and it's a beautiful shot so it's again you know we have to try and look for different different elements storytelling is what we need to aim for but if we, even if we are able to add another element to the photo it really goes to another level lovely yeah now again does gear matter <laughs> this is a question that everyone asks but i think it matters it matters 
to a huge extent but i'm not saying it in the uh, sense that okay you spend 5 lakhs or 10 lakhs and then it matters i would say that if if i knew better i would have if i wanted to do only bird photography i should have rather invested in a you know a d500 instead of a d850 but no i think the portrait shots that a d850 gives is another level but yeah the 10 fps that a d500 gives is another level so there's something or the other you'll always you need to find the right balance which i think the gear helps you so i'm not trying to show here that okay you need to buy a costlier camera go for a z9 or go for a 600 f4 it depends it depends on your buying capability but you and i am am both both agree that we've seen people create miracles with a you know basic entry level cameras also it's just about putting in that kind of effort so yeah yeah uh, camera's focus tracking ability matters a lot you need to know that how good is your camera at tracking the prime lens versus zoom lens is again a big story the zoom lens allows you i i i remember in satal i was sitting in the satal studio area there was a guy sitting beside me who had a prime lens 800 mm the bird just came and sat in front of us just 5 feet away he wasn't able to click it the one the one the one that you see here the himalayan uh, bulbul uh, the bul uh, uh, black bulbul sorry here uh, he wasn't able to click this bird i was able to click it and it got all the details so it's a it's a mystery to be honest matlab it depends what you can click good photos with zoom also and with prime also but with zoom you don't have to move around a lot with prime you have to move around a lot but then the quality of image prime on a prime lens is going to be slightly better or or maybe a lot better in certain situations than the zoom lens so it's 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 a never ending discussion but you should know what you want to achieve what you want to aim for and then go for it now like mirrorless these uh, you know brands are coming up with zoom lenses with um, prime quality like what we yeah. discussed in yeah. yeah yeah so yeah you've told me like the 180 to 400 mm 180 200 400 to 400 so there are a bunch of lenses which most of these major brands have come up so that's another option it all depends on what is your affordability yeah absolutely so yeah so very well answered by you it it actually settles the discussion for the prime lens and the zoom lenses so now talking about mirrorless and dslr i agree mirrorlesses have a lot of benefits lot of it but dslrs don't count them out yet they are still going to be there for a long time and don't think that it's out it's not dslrs still create magic nikon has been creating mad- uh, magic with dslrs for a long time and they'll keep on doing it if they if it was going to end they would have stopped it they have not they're still, still selling those bodies and they are doing pretty well now coming to budget in terms of buying a camera if for people who want to invest in bird photography i think the nikon d500 and the 200 500 f5.6 is a killer camera it's not too steep on the pocket it gives you good resolutions also if you are into prints the d850 of course is a good option mirrorless yes eye tracking is there when the bird changes the plane uh, you are able to focus better the z9 has been uh, you know turning heads since it's came, it's come so depending on your buying power you can invest in that and if you are into animal and mammal photography i would like to add here the one that nisha ma'am said just now 180 to 400 add that to this list and you can use these kind of lenses and uh, create magic so this is where it is if are there are any questions with related relation to ge- uh, gear i'm sure we can answer those uh now coming to the later pa- last part of the uh you know presentation i think i've taken a lot of time oh, been, yeah uh, a big a photo in focus trust me guys just believe this a photo in focus is half the battle one you need to ensure that your photo is in focus and for that there are a few steps that you need to do just understand your camera and you'll succeed every time understanding the exposure triangle use exposure compensation is important using a tripod a bean bag these are your best friends don't take them lightly i see a lot of people who are lazy and not using these please guys use this this will really take your photography to another level it really helps get down to the eye level don't be lazy like i was initially Inter- uh, and the b- subject will interact with you it will look at you and different stories can be created from that particular moment 
move around, look for smoother backgrounds. Landscape versus portrait, a big debate, but you need to decide. Trust me, you can do, you, you, if you, once you start clicking with three, four months of experience for the newcomers, you'll start understanding, okay, this one needs to be a portrait, this one needs to be a landscape. No need to zoom in all the time. Use the habitat. We want shallow depth of field when we are taking portraits, but when we are trying to get the habitat in the uh, perspective, it really doesn't matter. It you, you can zoom out a bit and click. Golden hour shots, you can message me separately if you want to understand. I'll I'll help you with that. Experiment with your, uh, you know, uh, uh, and find your success mantra to be specific. What works for you? Like I feel that flying shots and action shots are my strength because I'm always on the lookout. So find your strength and follow it. Differentiate from everyone else. Know your limitations of the camera like the ISO. Okay, like I know the D850 cannot do a couple of things, but that's fine. It can do 10 things which other cameras also cannot do. So you need to understand what the strengths of your camera are. Try, and fly, try flying shots, reflection shots, unique shots. Think in your mind, try to create something different. Be willing to experiment. Reels and you know uh, videos are another thing which really make a lot of difference. So get, get into the habit of, you know, making videos. Once you start making videos, it's, it's again, storytelling to another level and don't lose heart. If you don't get a good shot, uh, you'll always get your shot sometime or the other. It's never too late. Uh, now, of course, uh, I kind of consider myself a decent person when it comes to Instagram, because it's become the most happening, uh, method for people to express their bird photography and mammal photography, uh, I started with it and recently I've gone on to other mediums, but uh, just a few pointers for everyone. If you guys want to understand how I, I'm going to tell you how Instagram works for me, post daily, keep a fixed time of posting, understand, you know, insights, their insights in your profile. You'll understand what are the most active times post around that time. You'll get good response. Reach is important. Don't run after numbers. Be jack of all, all trades, be, but be a master of one. Let your profile be unique. It has to have a theme. It's not like you post a bird photo and then suddenly you post a photo of, uh, you know, two friends hanging out. Try to maintain a theme. Follow that particular sense. Okay, you can post a photo of yourself with the camera. It's fine because it's related to what you're doing. Understand your audience. Check Instagram insights like I mentioned earlier. Post stories regularly. Announce your new new post. People look forward to. Some people might even be following you, and they they enable those uh, tabs that okay, when this person posts something, I should get notified. So those kind of things happen. Share posts with fellow photographers. Make them uh, uh, feel valued. Uh, experiment with reels. Interact with your followers. You know, comment on their photos also because every one of us feels very nice when we click a nice photo and people say, wow, man, you clicked a fantastic photo. It's not that you're looking for, uh, you know, acceptance, but you're just looking for, uh, you know, acknowledgement for your hard work that you've put in. Uh, to, to a lot of people, it matters. Uh, it doesn't matter. To me, it matters because if I post a photo and a friend of mine who I believe is uh, a fantastic photographer, probably maybe better than me. If tomorrow Nisha ma'am comments on my photo, I would be like, wow, she commented on my photo. If Mohan Thomas, sir, comments on my photo, I feel like, okay, he really likes it. That means I'm going in the right direction because I'm fairly new. So these kind of things help, you know, interact with followers, comment on their photos. Everyone looks for that response to your comments regularly. It is very important. So because leave the algorithm aside on Instagram, if someone come, has taken the effort of commenting on your photo, you have got to respond to them and don't just blindly thank. Because I've seen people, okay, what settings did you use here? And you say, thank you. Don't do that. It doesn't really help. That person will never comment on your photo ever again. The four by five vertical ratio works really well. One is to one also works. Four is to five horizontal also works. But don't go by nine by 16 because it makes your photo very small in the mobile screen. Don't post that. It, it can be posted, but yeah, I don't generally do that. It's my personal observation. If you are serious about photography, make a logo, you know, let yourself give yourself the opportunity to become a brand. 
you may not be earning from it you may by maybe doing it just for passion purpose but you have to be unique you have to stand out there should be a signature on your photo which is unique to you so use hashtags but do not repeat them i i've created six sets of hashtags i use them on different days so it it works for me and my reach is fine it comes out to be nice tag communities love your page and treat it like a baby this is the bottom line that i'd like to say everyone should do this you know and you will succeed and again uh, do what you love and love what you do these are these are again lines that i live by and that's about it and now i'm sorry i've taken a lot of your time so Thank if you. there are any questions at all <laughs> i know we had a small a small window and i take took a lot of time i have not uh, no, no no worries no worries it's it, really interesting and we do have some questions and comments so if i'm starting yeah. with the questions we, can, I mean, we can just uh, stop the presentation now it's over so yeah, yeah. go ahead with the questions. yeah I've, i've just closed the presentation so you're yeah. back to the screen uh, so manaska i have a comment uh, i love the take on a uh, gear does gear matter i have heard many sort of like you know try playing smart saying it doesn't matter uh what is true is true a lovely session so that was a compliment of course okay. your best matter your best yeah, matter but you know you don't have to think about uh, jumping into the high end uh, to begin with it depends on whatever you have you will be able to make an image if you're using um startup camera and if you're comparing it with the high end camera the difference is going to be the time you are going to invest on it and its performance when it comes to fps frame per second the performance when it comes to uh, low light performance uh, so all these things are going to be different when you are going to use a higher end camera but then that doesn't mean that if you are going to use a startup camera or a mid level camera you cannot make a good image that's a wrong concept uh, you can but the effort is going to be double or triple and there will be slightly quality difference depending on the light and the action and things like that so that yeah. will be a general take and that's what even sushmit was talking about yes yes absolutely. and then we have rishab we have a question how important okay. do you think the camera body is and is it okay to get an entry level mirrorless camera and a good lens workable what's your yeah, take I uh you answered this question already but i think entry level cameras are helpful of course you you got to check out the megapixel count because honestly if you want to click portraits if you want to click something uh, you know uh, yeah you you can use mirrorless cameras entry level mirrorless cameras would work depends on the lens also a lot of times and you've got to check the combination because you know a lot of times uh, i like i researched on google and youtube that okay does this lens work with with this uh, work with well with this camera yeah so like i know for that matter that okay a d850 along with the 200 500 is a very good company co uh, combination yeah. the focus may be slightly slower compared to a prime lens yeah but then you are able to get it so you need to research a lot an entry level camera can help you improve your skills take it to the next level and then probably you can buy a better camera and take your photography to the next level Yeah. like i am also you know i i, I haven't mentioned uh, that before the d850 i had another uh, two cameras but since i was not doing bird photography as such so i can't comment on that but yeah i have met so many people so many experienced people who started off with the d30 7500 now they are on the z62 and they probably may buy the z9 also but they've experimented with these cameras and they've created marvels with these cameras i know a couple of people who who make the camera work not the camera does not make them work but they also make the camera work so it really depends you know what i meant by by the gear that you uh, ma gear matters is that the gear should work for you there's no universal rule for a gear yeah there are certain cameras which are super hit they're doing well you can invest in those they even come for under a lakh you can try no issues the lenses of course i can say for starters and the in early uh, bird photographers if you are a nikon fan 200 500 solves everything for you yeah no one is at all yeah definitely and again the question if you're going back again mirrorless with the uh, good lens definitely it is workable because most of the mirrorless which is coming up 
got a good spec so most of it it it, it all got a pretty good decent spec when it comes to cameras and lenses yeah i think most of except uh, sony most of the uh, uh, cameras definitely will will require an adapter uh, to work with the lenses so that's going to be an additional investment you have to do uh, but then that is what it is at least for some more years until the cameras are, it see like from analog to digital there was a transition period right now this is going to be the next transition period things are going to change Uh, in, I'm not saying that this is the end of DSLR. DSLR is going to be there for a while, but future is going to be definitely mirrorless. Uh, that's and, that's and let me ask you this. we have to accept. Yeah, and I'm answering this question again for you, for all the people who are watching that don't think that should I buy a, a you know, a, like I had this doubt, and Nisha also answered this for me. Another friend of mine who's using a you know a Nikon prime lens. I was worried that okay, would it work if I invest in a Z9 after a year? Would my S uh, lens work with the Z body? I think it would, and these lenses will not go out of fashion. They work for years, and they'll keep on working for years. Maybe I, I am worried. I want to probably get the 500 f4 because I might that might be the last 500 mm lens. <laughs> I want to keep it. because it may work even i i don't see i don't think we can come across anyone today even ma'am you would be agreeing that okay from 10 years from now probably still d850 with a 500 f4 would be working they'll say ha huh, it gives good photos so yeah i don't see, think uh, we need to worry a lot about that the thing is going to make your life easy imagine uh, the the 600 mm when i try to use a 600 mm from thomas uh, in the very first one not the um, not the uh, late second version or the third generation not the full right one it was a struggle for me to lift it so the new lenses definitely is going to make your life easier be it in line with the weight of the lens or things like that naturally every every equipment which we are going to use is going to come up with something new feature which will make your life slightly more easier definitely i do add a value when it comes to people like me with a small wrist if the brand is going to come up with a lightweight thing it definitely makes our life easy to do a handheld shot for a little more longer so these kind of things definitely do matters Uh, but that's not going to stop anyone uh, from using a uh, you know the older version if they feel comfortable with it it's life will you know it it depends on how much time we have and how much sacrifice we are ready to do so that's what is going to be the answer for that question and the next one okay. in some scenario uh, it's uh, nearly impossible to get a good shot of a bird since they are too far would you use a tele converter to get an extra reach this is from uh, chintan goel okay uh, i think you can answer this better but first i'll give my perspective i'll be a small answer because i have never used a tele converter but i know that tele converters work best with prime lenses because and professional bodies because they've got the strength to use that I I I haven't come across anyone using a tele converted with a 200 500 because I think it does not work very well with that because I have not used it ma'am you can answer this question better but you need to understand that uh, you know like if you're using a f4 lens and you use a 1.4 tele converter it might take it to 5 6 then it's fine but you have to know what lens you're using what body it is you have and then probably click it it is possible like i have come across someone who uses a uh, 2x tele converter and they had a 400 mm lens and they got a very beautiful shot of the pelicans in water and they were able to create a mag- magical shot from that but then they had a prime lens 400 mm f2.8 which goes to maximum 5.6 so it's fine uh, so just see that if it works for you then let it work otherwise these uh you know with these cameras like d850 gives me a lot of benefit i can use it in crop sensor mode also so my 500 mm goes up to i think 700 or something like that and i can reach get that range but yeah you have you need to realize that okay 
is it okay should i click or should i let it go because sometimes we get like i, I i'm 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 trying to be an expert here and talking about bird photography i have not clicked a pelican till date so <laughs> it's a very sad thing for me but this year i will and i go to bharatpur next so you need to pick your battles you know you need to check that okay can i get it but yeah the answer is if you have a tele converter if it a, if it is a prime lens i think it will not sacrifice the quality of the photo that extent it does to a very little limit now rest uh, of course nisha ma'am can answer <laughs> yeah no i mean i uh, when i was using uh, canon i i, I was using a um, 1dx um, i mean especially talking about the birding days i was using um towards the end and i'm not talking about the towards the starting towards the end i was using a for um, 600 mm along with the 1dx and i had a 1.4x converter honestly the very very few occasions i have used it um you know no matter what we say there is definitely a small change in the quality when we use a uh, converter so i was somehow kind of feel very happy without using a converter but i know there are a lot of people who use tele converter especially with um, uh, 2.8 400 mm lenses a lot of birders who use 2x converter along with it 1.4x converter along with it and i think i i am not too sure but i think in one of jeffrey wu sessions uh, he mentioned he used converters even with han uh, 8400 i uh, i think yes he mentioned that he do use uh, converters so it it is a personal choice uh, somehow i am not very comfortable in using uh, tele converters it's a personal it's also is a, it's a, it's a it's a task in itself you know yeah. i can't even think of changing a lens putting a tele converter and adjusting it and with those heavy primes and lifting it it's too yeah. much of a task and the good part is yeah in certain cameras like i think nikon and canon do have an inbuilt converter which comes with the cam with the lens so that is definitely a great option that was something which I, we were discussing right before the session with sushmit as well if you are asking me what is the best lens i come across in nikon line that is going to be 180 400 as of now along with the uh, you know i don't own it but along with the tele converter it, it is f4 from 180 to 400 mm it got an inbuilt converter and that makes your life so easy and you have a zoom lens which gives you the quality of a prime lens that makes you your life make you know you have a 70 200 mm a 180 400 then a uh, uh, wide angle then you any trip your yeah, gear package is done so that yeah. is definitely a plus point when it comes to this so yes you need to see what you are sacrificing and what you are going to obtain so that that is kind of answering your question about uh, zoom lens and prime lens as well so 180 400 mm is going to cost you as much as a prime lens because it's going to give you the result and like that so of course there is an investment uh, that's something which you need to consider but you, if you are a starter if you are a beginner you don't have to jump into 180 400 you can go for 100 anything which gives you a 400 mm range Uh, 100 400 80 400 200 600 um, 200 500 whatever which you can afford go with that your affordability is the only thing which counts the rest comes with your experience spend couple of years at least one year spending at least one hour every day at least two couple of hours on uh, regularly on weekends and give it one or two years then you will see the difference from day one to after two years time so experience and working and practicing is what is going to make the difference i yes. keep i know people who have big lenses keep it in their house and after one or two years they say they have fungus in their lens so a lens is not going to make you a photographer to become a photographer you need to go out start to shoot on a regular basis guys so Don't worry about the equipment. Think what is your budget and just go for it. Yeah. We have one more question. Uh, yeah. So uh, that is from uh, Arisha Jain. Can you cover a bit on aspect ratio to be used, please? Yeah, it depends on where you're using it. Uh, to be honest, like I'll give you an example. I'm more of present on uh, you know uh, 
social media platforms like i use 500px i use instagram and uh, the yeah i would say rather these two mediums is where i am present in uh, a 2 is to 3 ratio horizontal uh, works really well with a 500px uh, a 4 is to 5 vertical works well with instagram a 4 is to 5 horizontal works with instagram even a square works with uh, one is to one ratio works with instagram so see you got to do justice to the bird and the subject and if you're trying to cover the uh, you know like for that matter there are a lot of websites where you know you can probably uh, sell your photos as wallpapers also so for wallpapers when we know that it's going to be a horizontal rectangular kind of a screen the yeah. 2 is to 3 ratio or is the 4 is to 5 ratio works perfectly so you need to understand like i have experience i have been for 2 years on instagram with the photography profile my other profile has been for uh, more than 10 years but yeah i ob- observe this that engagement on instagram specifically happens more with a photo which is 4 in, which is 4 is to 5 vertical ratio because uh, if you look at it carefully it's a very scientific method it's that when you scroll through your mobile phones once you scroll uh, in your uh, you know basic the home timeline if it's a 4 is to 5 ratio it covers your entire screen so there isn't the engagement level will be more because if it's a smaller photo if it's a 1 is to 1 or is a 4 is to 5 uh, horizontal then once you're looking at that photo you see another photo on the screen because of screens are big these days so for increasing engagement the 4 is to 5 really works but then it depends on the if it's a habitat sub, a habitat kind of a photo i have seen some exceptional shots in even 9 is to 16 ratio and they've created wonders uh then there is something that uh, mr thomas vijayan does uh you know he posts these carousel posts wherein he splices the photo in two parts and the third one is uh completely in the center with the 9 is to 16 ratio so those kind of things can be done and 500px you can go vertical you can go horizontal because that is a that is an app which can be used on the laptop or even the mobile and there's no restriction on that so these kind of platforms i think it depends on what kind of photo you're trying to click and accordingly you get your aspect ratios yeah yeah and then jeb i'm just going to sh- give you a shout out on everybody who said hello so we have eli who's a regular who always come here then again bipin uh anubam your friend and then paul manuran again and one of our regular people and uh, umesh is umesh umesh snaps um, good to be connected I, i'm not sure whether somebody whom you know uh mm. Sat, then satyadevan and um uh, uh, radha krishnan definitely someone who was who are op- who's always uh, here to support the artists and uh, you know uh manaska rish rishab and uh, chetan so some interesting questions some beautiful support uh, so would like to thank everybody and I'd thank, like to thank you everybody. first of all because uh, yeah it, it's my first uh, you know experience like this besides my own instagram page where i i don't get invited i have to invite people <laughs> but here uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity because i have known a few people who have been on your platform and they are all uh, appreciation for you and you specifically and hames of course uh, hope he gets well soon and uh, i'll be a regular in terms of attending the sessions from now on and uh, lovely time i had i just hope i didn't take a lot of time no. and uh, trouble people because i i you know um, i've observed this thing about myself since i've gotten to phot- photography i've gotten a little forgetful I I I I go into my own creative world that's changed because I used to be a very uh, prim and proper kind of a person that okay talk how much is required but since I've gotten into this creative field I think hazards of the job <laughs> that's how it is I don't know it's happened with me I don't know about everyone else but yeah you you tend to go into your own imagination and talk probably a little more about the subject that you love I think yeah. that happens to all of us because the moment you're talking about things which you love, which you care, which you find happiness in, we kind of keep lose the track of time. But that's fine. 
as far as you know you were talking really sensible not, things and you really add more value to the people who were listening to it so yeah no your nod makes me feel a lot better now <laughs> <laughs> no no i i do the same thing so i totally do understand but and we are we are okay with almost half of the presentation i was thinking nisha must be thinking he talks a lot you should just finish it but thankfully that it's that's not the case i'll get to know that later once the presentation finishes <laughs> so no, no, it was really nice. It was really nice. It that you see the thing is with every clip of what you have shared, you have added value to it. You have you had a story, you had reasons why you clicked the picture. So that's what is going to make life easier. That's what is going to add more value to people who are listening to this because when they see this, if that is going to add some kind of value when they are in the field, that's. That's what this all. I hope we are able to help you. Yeah. So, and we have another question. How do oh, you get the sessions? Uh, the notification for the sessions. If you are following our our Instagram profile, which is Post Trails, we will be keep on sharing um, when is going to be the next one. And in the normal scenario, we do have one session. a week so there are places you know there are weeks where we have one to three sessions a week but we try to keep one session at least a week on an uh, in a regular scenario so four to six sessions we do in a month so you can please follow us and please follow uh, sushmeet uh, on our uh, on the instagram channels so that you will be posted with our regular updates Uh, so Rakhavendra uh, uh, mentioned that thank you Sushmeet for a lovely presentation. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> You're really welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank so that so was it for uh, today. So thank you all for uh, being here. And uh, as we just mentioned, uh, the next presentation will be soon. We shall keep you posted through our Instagram channel and through our Facebook as well. Till then, you all please take care, stay safe, and uh, see you soon. Happy trekking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you, Nisha. Love talking to you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.